So my name is Michal Gabrielczyk and I'm head of Edge AI at Cambridge Consultants. We're a product developer and a technology consultancy. And in practice, that means we help our clients make really big technology-led innovations in their market. So that could mean taking a customer through an ASIC development, or it might mean designing a wearable and taking it all the way to manufacture, or maybe it's about putting a brand new 5G antenna on a plane in the stratosphere. Um, what gets us out of the bed is new technology. And one of the other common threads for us in our work is that we're really interested in understanding the edges of what is possible with technology and what the trade-offs are in real world applications. And so for us, what's possible in the internet of things comes up quite a lot. And we're really interested in understanding what the capabilities are now, what can we put into endpoint devices. So we've been looking at the Cortex M55 and the EETHOS U55 to understand how they build on the capabilities of the earlier M series processors. So as part of trying to understand what it is that's actually possible to do in the endpoint, we, we really want to understand the full picture of the technology that's available on the market for our customers so we can help them make really the right design choices, the right trade-offs. Uh, and we're increasingly seeing that those customers are interested in adding intelligence in those end devices. So we need to understand how different algorithms and how different power performance relationships work in different IP. As an ARM approved design partner for a number of years, we've been getting early access to ARM's IP for a little while now. So we've been trying to understand about the Cortex M series. Um, and in return, we're able to provide feedback to ARM about the performance in the applications that our customers are coming to us for, uh, as well as the tools and the development flows before that goes on to a wider audience. So earlier in the year, we got access to the Cortex M55 and the Ethos U55, and that's included the RTL, that's included the fast models and the cycle models, that's included an FPGA platform, and also development tools like the Vela compiler, which optimizes TensorFlow, TensorFlow like micro models onto the U55 accelerator. And combined with all of that, we've actually been able to get access to the great team at ARM that have developed all of that to help us with, with working with it in the first instance. To begin with, we took a voice activity detection application as a test case. We wanted to draw a comparison with earlier platforms that we're familiar with. So we started with something that will enable us to explore what the new capabilities were and also to make a comparison to what we've seen before. So that voice activity detection application, we'd originally implemented it on an FPGA, which included an ARM Cortex-A9, and then we ported it onto an M3 along with our Sapphire DSP. And the aim of that was to achieve a really low power draw. So the way that worked was that the DSP was listening for sound and then turning on the Cortex M3 to classify those words only when it was needed. And we demonstrated that last year at Techcom and we'd got that to the point of running in the order of milliwatts, um, which is the equivalent of running the voice activity detect application with the classification on just a coin cell battery. So that was our starting point on the M3. We then ported that onto the Cortex M55, where we were able to achieve some really quite significant improvements in the cycle time and the energy consumption. And then we added the Ethos U55, and that came down an order of magnitude again. So it got to the point where we were comparing a bar chart of the cycle times and the power draws, and I couldn't even see the bar on the, on the uh, chart. So effectively for that kind of neural network load, the M55 U55 combination is a factor of a thousand times faster than the implementation we had on an M3. So that leaves room either for uh, increasing the workload, it leaves room for keeping the processor turned off for longer and driving down the power consumption another level again. Um, and in the world of wearables and IoT devices, um, and particularly with that order of magnitude change, that's pretty significant. There is another accelerator that's available with the M55, which is the Helium Vector Extension Accelerator. We haven't explored that too much yet in this application, but we can see that optimizing uh, for larger neural networks, uh, that will start playing quite a significant role in accelerating those again. 
So in that work on the audio application that I described, we were quite impressed with the performance we were getting. So that gave us the confidence to try and really stretch the capabilities of the Cortex M55 and the Ethos U55 together. So we're now in the process of supporting a cloud-based image classification algorithm, which is in the order of 200 million max. So it's quite sizable onto that Cortex M55 and Ethos U55. And that's probably not what the platform's really aimed at, but we're quite keen to, to stretch it. And so far, it's looking promising. It's looking like it's delivering the sort of uh, performance that we'd expect. So that application is a neural network for uh, an application in medical diagnostics, which we think could be quite significant for enabling a complex diagnosis in the field without any connectivity and without any mains power. Uh, and I'd say that's an example of a whole new class of intelligent endpoint device that we're going to start seeing with this, uh, this level of power uh, in the field. So in my view, the M55 and the U55 has really been aimed at adding intelligence and interactivity into endpoints. And we started looking at keyword detection test case here, and we're now stretching that really into object detection and classification and images. And between those two points, there's a lot of possibilities. So I'd expect this is a pretty fundamental technology and enabling of a lot of what we see in the trends towards zero UI or minimal UI interfaces. So at the low end, perhaps we'd be able to start putting more voice control into wearables and power harvesting devices. Uh, and at the top end, maybe we're stretching out into gesture recognition and zero touch interaction. Um, of course, that's also a really interesting area at the moment. So we've worked with ARM's M series process for quite a while now, and we've looked at the power and performance trade-offs for a lot of IoT applications for our customers. And I think it's safe to say that the Cortex M55 and the Ethos U55 combination offers a real step change over what was available to us with earlier generations. So thinking about the cloud-based image classification neural net that we're currently porting onto that combination, that's something that previously needed a GPU to run on. And we're now able to realistically talk about putting that onto something that's more in the microcontroller cost and power envelope. And I don't think you need me to tell you quite how much possibility that opens up for intelligent endpoint devices if you think about the power of potentially a GPU at that level.